Sammy Debs asks, um, I, um, you always say I can't tell the difference in AB amplifier. How about a class D? Nope. Not me. I'd, I'd say it's probably going to be pretty difficult. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't say we always say that. I mean, if, yeah. if there's a design that's not good, then it's probably yeah. going to have some issues that are audible. But if it's designed like an amplifier to simply amplify, then you shouldn't be able to tell anything. Shouldn't the only way to anything. know is to set up like a true double blind test. But nobody ever wants to go through the trouble of doing that. Well, the interesting thing is there are people that have done those. And, you know, and pretty much I've yet to see one conclusive blind test double blind test that they said yep we absolutely we had an 80 percent you know they were able to determine which amplifier it was pretty much always like it the the numbers were skewed all over the place you know so yeah i mean nobody can do it with any statistical significance yeah, right yeah. like that you you, get, yet, you can guess half, half the time and get it right if it's correct one or the other correct so well, this, that's why I don't worry about amplifiers. As long as they, as long, you know, like I think if you're going to test them, that's okay. Just make sure they do the basic things, and then you're done. Like, do they provide like the, amp the power they're supposed to? Do they right, amplify? Yeah. Do they provide the power that they say they will? And yeah. that's kind of all you really need to know. I mean, like it would be interesting. I would love to do it myself. I just don't have the means mm -hmm. to test amplifiers and just put them on different loads. You know, like build um, networks that emulate a real speaker but like different loads you know like this speaker is a more complex load and this speaker is a relatively simple just eight ohm nominal load and test them and see like does this does the amplifier fail right like does, does it do all right does it put out the power that it's supposed to those are things that i think would be interesting yeah no i mean they do that uh uh what do you call it williston audio right he does a lot of like, um, like, so, like basic bench testing, at least. Does it putting yeah. out the wattage that it says? I mean, that's important. Right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. But so you, I can see like there's been plenty of cases where you can see where the frequency response uh, between different amplifier topologies and even some amplifiers of the same topology mm -hmm. will behave differently. But usually it's only just like a really minimal difference or if it's a class yeah. D, it's so high in frequency that it's outside the audible range. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but there is validity to saying that they can certainly sound different, but if they can, you should be able to measure the difference of why they sound different. Yeah. So I've done, I've done a test where I had, I kept the mic and the speaker in the exact same place and I just changed out the amplifiers and right. then I did like sweep tests and then I just kind of overlaid them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's some that they measure slightly different, like especially this old Marantz that I used to have, right. That one measured real different, but it had, tone controls even though they were like you know in the middle who knows maybe it was like slightly off you know what i mean yeah. um but yeah it measured slightly different but if i were to pull up that graph right now comparing it to any other speaker it's almost like variation in speakers the same mm -hmm. speaker right you buy a speaker right. from a manufacturer maybe they they're gonna have a little bit of variation between them it's like that small of a difference yeah. From these wildly different apps that I tested out, I tested out like some cheap, cheap, cheap Class D, you know, a uh, Marantz, so uh, an old Marantz, a new Marantz, like all like just wildly different amplifiers. Um, and then I had this amplifier where you could ch uh, switch out the op amps. That's the reason I did it because they said, "Oh, this op amp is supposed to be warm." I'm like, I could barely. Huh. Anyway, um, I think it's just it's not where I would focus. Uh, most of my attention just because you can eq a lot of stuff out right like i it would be very easy to change up the sound of a speaker uh with different amps and make it sound like a different app just because it's such a small difference um but the here's the thing i have noticed though crappy amplifiers typically have a lot of noise like that's the most obvious thing you'll notice oh yeah like, the background some, noise yeah, well i've had some with like obviously like hilarious like noise like if it's if it's not just an amp not just a power amp uh let's say it's integrated it has like maybe it has like wireless something or blue. sometimes you get interference so mm -hmm. i was seeing somewhere it had like a high pitch whine and i took the measurement I'm like dude there's a, a freaking spike right here like it's making this noise that i don't know <coughs> maybe they couldn't hear it maybe their hearing wasn't good enough but it's like it's, I'm like, it's right there i mean these are obvious issues and if they have a lot of hiss those are my main issues. If the amplifier is yeah. quiet, right? When you have it on, it's not making very much noise. Yeah. If it 
provides the power that it says it's going to provide. And uh, if it looks really cool, I mean, that's it. I think Those that's the, that's <laughs> kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. If you're interested in joining us in the after show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash daily hi fi. We'd love to hang out with you and get to know you better. We're going to have a lot of fun.